The dwarves of the Iron Hills have turned to the side of evil and they've betrayed their Erebor kin in this Dawnless Day's siege battle for you today. Today, guys, we are back in the world of Middle Earth and oh boy, I always do enjoy uh, Middle Earth sieges. You know, a bit of Dawnless Day's always goes well on the weekend. But yes, I hope you guys are having a great weekend and uh, yes, Sit back, relaxing, maybe got yourself some snacks, some drinks, and prepared for a glorious 3v3 siege battle for you today. And we have, on the attack, we do have a, uh, an alliance of men, elves, and dwarves. We do have Gondor, we have Lothlorien, and we also have the dwarves of Erebor. So yeah, I guess a bit of a last alliance sort of siege, I guess, going on there. And then on the, uh, on the defense here today, we do have uh, Dunland, we have uh, Umbar, and we do have the... Uh, dwarves of the Iron Hills as well as we've already seen and already going in we have Amor Sentinels right now and they are being surrounded by Dwarven Company and also looks like Adun and Akoria already seeing Umbar sending in their elite and oh boy what a start to this fight oh my gosh the fire coming down to these Adun and Akoria is absolutely brutal that's coming in from the Twilight Guard of Lothlorien now we can see Iron Hill Warriors being sent in as well Yes, as you might be able to tell since the Iron Hills are in this one, you're probably thinking, how the heck, Pope, did you get them? They are a uh, faction that comes with the Last Breath submod for Dawnless Day's Total War. I'll leave a link for it in the description if you haven't checked it out already. Uh, the devs are a great bunch of guys, they really are. And uh, if you haven't also checked out the uh, Dawnless Day's mod, I'd also do the same for that as well. Uh, they are, I mean, the mod's just amazing. And it's coming on so, uh, like, so much at the moment. I'm really excited for the campaign when that eventually does come out. But yes, it does. The mod is yeah amazing. Each time like there's an update and like we have new maps, new factions, new units added. Oh, it just makes me fall more and more in love with it. But yeah, as you can see already, a Dunakori sign a waiver and break already. What a waste, really, of a very expensive unit. And this is the defense, uh, like we're watching, we're seeing from like their perspective. Uh, so the defense, this is not good. That they already lost a very expensive Dunakori unit. They are pulling about their dwarves. Uh, Iron Hill Warriors and Dwarven Company are retreating, being chased by Amaral Sentinels, which I'd say are one of the best, like, uh, bang for your buck sort of souls units. Certainly if you're on defense, very, very good. Uh, I think really cheap, often will fight to, like, the last man or last elf, I should say. They're a really, really good unit. And we've got Dwarven Warriors coming forward as well. And so, yeah, it does seem as though we're going to have, like, a defense around this sort of slope here. And we're going to see uh, Corsair Archers support up here as well. They really want to use this huge le ledge. To sort of support their uh, support their defense, and I don't blame them. Uh, we are on uh, Dunberg here, which is I presume is a Dunland map uh, with the name Dunberg, and uh, I've never seen it ever used before. That's for sure. Uh, it's a really cool one. Uh, it's a massive, massive wall. No wonder the defense decided not to defend the walls. And um, it's a huge, long, long, long wall to try and defend. And yeah, I guess they just thought maybe the attackers would just maybe attack somewhere else and just get around them. And yeah, you can see a Gondor sword infantry getting absolutely mashed about by these uh, champion reavers there. Very good uh, charge by them. Some Dunherd swords here. Trying to help out that, that if they needed. But they're not going to be needed it seems. The Gondor sword here getting absolutely smashed about by those uh, champion reavers. Very nicely done. But yeah, I don't know how they got across actually. They just, oh they landed on this tower. Oh right, I was like I see, that's strange. Just land one unit and um, just almost sacrifice it. Maybe they were going for the gate or the towers, I'm not really sure what the plan was there for from Gondor. He just sent a, one unit that way and everything else with his allies this way. A strange move, that's for sure. I mean, the fighting has continued over here. Uh, Dwarven Company are already losing. It looks like they're kin from the dwarf, Dwarven Warriors. Look at this. Dwarves killing Dwarves. A sad day for the Dwarven kind. So who's going to win today? Are you rooting for like the Iron Hills? Or are you rooting for Erebor? Who's your favorite dwarf faction? Do let me know. Personally, I don't know who I'm rooting for. I kind of want to see the Iron Hills do bet like to win, but also I do like Erebor. Erebor is one of my favorite looking factions. I don't know. Gondor though, you know, hacking and slashing here with these Iron Hill warriors. Trying to do their best as well. Like they're, uh, they're holding on okay. One of the best things as well about the Last Breath sub mod is that it is well balanced with the main mod. So, like some of the other sub mods you see for Dawnless Days, 
Like, they just have super powerful units that just absolutely annihilate vanilla. Well, I guess, you can't, I guess it's vanilla for the mod uh, sort of units. So, yeah, like, Gondor Sword Image just gets absolutely annihilated by certain other units, for instance, in, like, Flames of the North. The Flames of the North units just generally supercharged. Or, like, the uh, Elven Expansion mod as well, also. Like, Elves are just insane. Like, the Eriagon Elves. Broken. But, uh, yeah, in Last Breath, they're very well balanced. Usually because there is a bit of a crossover in, uh, in devs and sort of, like, in testers. Uh, for both main and for uh, the sub mod, so it does certainly help benefit uh, the the quality of the mod. That is for sure. Uh, in other news, though, going actually back to the battle instead of just talking about the mod generally, we are seeing Gondor archers here. They're moving up. Maybe if I was them, I'd be setting my archers up somewhere around here by this archer tower. You can then shoot into the backs of the Aduna Cori. More being sent down. Wow. And also, you could just focus on these Balic bowmen. I'd be trying to shoot them. They are levies. If I was Gondor, I'd start focusing these guys down there, doing exactly that. Uh, archers have zero missile block, and these levy ones will break very, very easy. I know it is a bit of a strategy nowadays to bring low-tier archers. Because they have like the same sort of abilities and quality that uh, high-tier ones do. Like, there, there are arrows that are going to kill stuff either way, so it's better just to save money and bring lower-tier stuff. But the risk is is that you get outranged like those Balic Bowmen are being and you get uh, and they eventually start to wave and break like those Gondor Archers I mean they're all stood on top of each other that's a that's a bit of a no-no from uh, from the player you should have all his uh, Archers spread out so then he's not obstructing one another and he gets better volleys off then it's just small things like that you know the players I think just need to learn and know you want to do well also Warriors of Loznark would not bring uh, to be honest as Gondor I'd be bringing just more sword infantry, or more like, or pole arms, stuff like that. I uh, presume they have brought the Founding Guard. Gondor always does. Yeah, Founding Guards, he's actually left them outside the walls. I don't know why. Uh, maybe he's going to try another sneaky attack over here, maybe? I, I doubt it. He really shouldn't. It's not worth it at all. Uh, over on this side here, I was expecting Gondor to make an assault, but it doesn't seem like he is uh, at all. going to watch and wait as the Umbar Usurpers just stand there. I mean, honestly, I would just have, like, a couple of factions attack in one spot and then, like, have the elves and the dwarves attack over here and then let Gondor just be dedicated going up this street here. But I guess maybe they don't want to attack because they can see the sort of support that Dunland's providing. The Elder Archers here going to just shoot into the side of any sort of combat that takes place there and do a lot of damage. So I guess that's why they're just kind of waiting patiently. I mean, they're already getting shot up a lot in this choke point here, like, just getting rear-shotted at these Admiral Sentinels. Really changing the fight in favor of the defenders. But yes, if you're enjoying Dawnless Days content and want to see more Lord of the Rings and Dawnless Days, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment show support. It does really make a difference. It helps out the channel as we work towards 9k subs. We are slowly but steadily getting there. And your support, with a little like, a little comment, can make that difference. What do we got here? What's oh Dunn had chosen absolutely getting violated right now by Archers down to 96 out of 140. Yeah, they're not gonna last much longer. Or they're not gonna do at least much damage anyway. They could throw their axes. It's something that you could do. You could have them set up and like, let them throw their axes into the back of stuff over here. They're not not allowing them to do that. The Juno Cory here though, I mean Umbar has been very generously throwing away his elite infantry here. The elite shock has been going in and it's He's already lost one of them. They're capped at three, so he's used one third of his uh, elite shock already. And here's another third of it being sent into combat. This one's doing a little bit better, you know. It's not, but it's back to the enemy. It's doing okay. I don't know where the final one is. Uh, up there, right at the top of the hill here. I mean, he has got other good units as well. Like, Umbar is kind of like Harad, but they do have some other units added. And uh, obviously, they don't like all her Harad units, bar like... One mercenary cav unit. But yeah, they've got these Arfras and Asgar here, which are a very cool unit. Triple silver chevron as well. Yeah, they're not going to mess around. They are going to be slaying uh, the attackers today, that is for sure. Oh, yeah, look at that. That uh, Dun had chosen is just focused down to a man. They are throwing their axes now, but what a waste. Not really going to do anything. They're going into combat. They are wavering. Down to six troops, but they're still holding. That's impressive. A 
They'll try and do their bit to help against these Amor Sentinels. I don't know if they'll be able to do much. I think, I can't remember, yeah, Amor Sentinels. I feel like when I see Sentinels, it should be like a bow or a spear unit, really. Like they have the, uh, the Naeth Spearmen. They should be the, all like Naeth Infantry. They're a spear unit. They should probably be the, uh, Sentinels. And then just have like the, uh, the swords of the Naeth Infantry. Doing Rikori on this front line, if they kill these guys off, then they are through by the attackers basically because the uh, Dwarven Company won't hold. We are seeing Baelic Bowman, I mean, they've both been focused down. How they had wavered and broken, I don't know, but they're out of ammo, they're going in. I mean, as you can see, the uh, the front lines of the defenders are starting to break. Iron Hill Warriors, even with the support of Corsair archers up here, are, uh, are literally losing this fight. I mean, to be honest. If you're a Corsair archer right now, how do you even know what's below you? You're just being ordered by someone like... I imagine someone's like leaning over the edge of the cliff, just like, yeah. Literally just fired just over the edge, guys. There's a whole bunch of Gondor troops down there. We need to kill them. And you're like, alright, sir, I'll believe you. Like, you're putting a lot of trust in uh, your officer's ability. Well, and you, well your officer's uh, vision, and I guess your ability. And you're quite easy to just fire over the edge and just kill a bunch of dwarves. We are seeing healthy troops going to the front line here as well. More Iron Hill Warriors have gone in. We're going to try and hold that area for a little longer. Archers over here getting shot to pieces. Oh, and the Twilight Guard as well. Like, they are... Oh, jeez. What are they getting shot by? I think Elder Archers? Which is strange because the Twilight Guard will definitely outrange them. So, why are they getting so close? I do not know. Or maybe it was the Karnan Hunters. Uh, no, they still have full ammo. So, it definitely wasn't them. I thought maybe they'd be javying. No, that's too far away, and they have full ammo. So yeah, I don't know why the Twilight Guard was getting so close. They are very, very elite archers that have very good range. They do not need to get at all close to the enemy. Their arrows are like ballistic missiles. You're doing a Cory fight on. Akin and slashing away. Seeing fresh troops going here as well, trying to hold the line. Gondor had broken through in the center here. And he's now to flank a little bit, but it seems as though he's gonna send. Oh, looks like we've got Gondor sword infantry in there and dwarven warriors. Dwarves versus Dwarves again. They don't look like they're going to be breaking through any time. The problem with dwarves fighting each other is it's just basically two stones just hitting each other. Like, neither side's going to give the ground at all. They'll fight on for a long, long time. Even, like, these lower tier, like, dwarves, just, they don't die. It's so hard to kill. Like, almost imagine, like, tier two dwarves, basically tier three anything else. But they're so tough, tough to kill. Yeah, that choke point should hold for a while. Looks like we're going to see Iron Hill Crossbows getting sent up. I don't think they're going to go into melee, but they're getting very close to the front lines. Maybe that's how close they have to get to... Well, yeah, actually, they're firing into the backs of these Gondorians over here, so they're getting some decent shots. Another sort of rivalry, I guess, is, like, Umbar and Gondor, because, like, both are, like, Numenorian blood. Both are, like, dressed and armoured the same way. So another sort of rivalry there, like, we have Dwarves versus Dwarves, Umbar versus Gondor. I don't think Elves or Dunland have any sort of rivalry. Don't feel like the uh, Elves probably even knew Dunland existed before this war began. Like Dunland? Who's Dunland? <laughs> I'm going to look through their libraries back in like Imladris and just like, oh, what is a Dunland? But yes, Karnan Hunters over here, patiently waiting. I mean, 
it's a good setup they have here because I mean if they get close to trying to destroy this barricade they can just jabby or axe throw uh, the uh, the infantry that comes up so if you're gonna do it you gotta do it like a weakened sword unit or something like that something that the car hunters didn't have to waste ammo on if they want to stop you from destroying it or they just let it be destroyed and they save their ammo Yeah, Umbai surface it. Holding on by again, look, these like sentinels. You can still see them in there. One right here. They just fight on to these guys. I don't think it's a fresh unit. I think this is the same unit. Yeah, Amro Sentinels still being uh, still there. Look at the amount of troops being sent in. This is becoming a bit of a serious blob though. It's four units in there, it's too much. Uh, those uh, Corsair Arches there will get a field day. Adun Okori starting to feel the wear and tear of battle, is starting to lose. It's also fighting alone, also unsupported, so... Yeah, again, more serious blobbing going on here. We've got all five health units in here from the uh, from the attackers. They just need to hold off on this blobbing. Like, all you're doing is wasting troops. Uh, Numbers-wise, they have about 500 more men uh, to the attackers. It's about 5,000 versus 4,500. Uh, they did originally start with 800 uh, man advantage. So the defenders have closed it a little bit, but not like masses. Uh, we're seeing Dunhead Chosen as well coming up, setting up here. I imagine these guys... Gonna just, yeah, just set up behind the front lines and start jabbing either into this blob or maybe into the further one over there if they can reach. Dunhead chosen though. Really good unit. I mean, with all these Chevys as well, yeah, really, really good. The only problem is, like, you can see very light shock infantry. So, yeah, they die pretty quickly to archers as we've already seen, like, one unit be pulverized. Again, Corsair archers are actually attracting the uh, the fire of uh, the enemy archers here. Gondor archers, I think, mainly doing the most of the work. Shooting these Corsair archers, trying to rout them. They are nearly out of ammo. I mean, I'd say it's about a third left, their ammunition. So, still a threat. Corsairs and, like, oh, sorry, not Corsairs. Um, Dwarven warriors, and we've got Amaral Sentinels and Gondor infantry all being shot on the back there by Elder archers who are burning through their ammunition pretty quickly, but they're probably getting some pretty good rear shots right now onto these uh, these units. And uh, yeah, they really need to uh, sort their act out right now to the defenders. Stop blobbing up, makes targeting uh, units much, much more, where well, you're inclined much, very much more to do it. Again, the dwarves, he's not really even made any progress here. I think more than likely the, uh, the dwarves will hold, but I think the Dunacori, well, actually, I say that Dunacori, they're sending a third unit in down here. It's crazy, actually, it's crazy. I would have held those guys in reserve. They much, must have much better stuff. I mean, they've got uh, the Blood Avengers, which I would have said are, uh, are like worse than the Aduna Corey. Yeah, they're Light Shock, which I never realized they're such. They're like Light Shock. I don't think I ever realized that they. Uh, yeah, they must. I swear they used to be heavy, very heavy, but I'm not sure. Maybe they're not. Maybe they were. But uh, yeah, the spears of it, Iron Guards. You could have sent those guys in, I guess, but maybe they wanted to save them. That nasty choke point that they made there with the Black, Hens, Black Haven sentries and those iron guards. It's a pretty nasty choke point. We've got a fresh Corsair uh, archer on the way up. I hope they have some uh, archer. Like, uh, but yes, they do. They, they do. Supply barrels, that's what I'm looking for. I was going to say archer barrels, but that's not right. Yeah, as you can see here, Corsair archers setting off to go and get some, uh, some ammunition. And that's good because uh, those guys can then just start to focus down more units and rack up more kills, which would be even better. Something I do quite like that they added for, uh, for Attila's supply barrels. 
Here we go, the shock infantry, the Dunho Chosen, they're in here. Slicing and dicing. What's behind them? I think it's a Dunherd sword. Yeah. If I was the uh, defender, I'd be probably cycling out these troops. Like these uh, Dunherd chosen have a lot of ammo that they could be throwing, getting some good kills. There you go, they're wavering these Dwarven Warriors. Finally, they're get, uh, going to start to die. These uh, rear shots from the archers are starting to pay off. I think Cross was on the other side of doing the same thing. But also broken uh, a Dwarven Warrior here, which is good to see. The archers already running out of ammo as well for the attack. His Gondor archers out of ammo. Uh, I think they've used most of it shooting other archers up here on this ridge. But the Corsair archers are healthy and have healthy ammunition as well. Oh boy, that's going to be tough for the uh, for the attackers to deal with. They've got another like one, two, three, maybe certainly, maybe uh, maybe a fourth, I guess, if it comes back. That one's over there resupplying. That comes back to the, uh, the the cliff. There's at least four units with that ammunition that can just pour fire onto this choke point. Dunland's holding his own. He is holding his own, that is for sure. Just kind of waiting to see if anyone breaks through. I mean, really, the attackers need to think about making an attack somewhere else. Just need some more imagination. Just try and stretch the defenders a little bit. The defenders could quite happily defend these two choke points, keep just flooding troops in there. If you attack somewhere else, though, it A, distracts the defenders, makes them micro a little bit more. Also, I mean, they have so many extra troops, like, the elves have barely gone in, as have the dwarves. Um, like, all their elites are still to come in. The elves have, yeah, a lot of Gladium Swordmasters, Twilight Guard. Looks like they're bringing up heroes of Amon Lank as well. Oh, yes, Twilight Guard General being shot at here. Very good. We can get behind that. Yeah, they just need to attack somewhere else to try and do some damage. I mean, that Twilight Guard there could shoot into the side of these uh, these Karnan Hunters, try and do some serious damage to them. Send uh, either force them down so like a sword unit or something can go up and just basically deal with that uh, that barricade. The Amaral Sentinels here. I don't know if they'll beat the Iron Hill Warriors. Probably, I think, because uh, Iron Hill Warriors are a little bit ba busted up anyway. It's a tough one, two sides really, really busted in. But yeah, Dune Corey sent in, they've been shifted along to help out here. Really, I'd want Dune Corey is like flanking units, just slashing and hacking into flank units. But here they're just being used in like a straight up fist fight. Yeah, it's a little concerning that the uh, defenders are willingly throwing in all these shock infantry. And there you go, the archer fire comes in and causes these guys to start to die. Who is firing that ammo? Twilight Guard back there. Uh, the defenders could counter it and just start focusing down the Twilight Guard if they wanted to. It's whether they want to risk it. We've got Erebor crossbows over here as well. I imagine these guys aren't getting the grace of angles. Looks like they're getting some volleys. I mean, these Iron Hill crossbows here are doing some damage, I think, to the uh, to the uh, arable crossbows. But yeah, Iron Hill crossbows are just so much weaker. 
so much weaker. Even if you're firing a bolt at the arable crossbows, you're not going to kill them as quickly as the Iron Hill ones will be. Steadily, though, there is a lot of routing troops here. A lot of the Gondor archers are routing. Don't know why he sent these guys in. I mean, this is just pretty easy kills, these guys. Maybe the reason they just, uh, I mean, it's throw the way archers just want to try and make the enemy waste ammo. I mean, it's just not going to work. I'd hold them in reserve before I set them up, maybe. Like a late game play, maybe would be a better move. I feel like I'm doing, doing a lot of advice in this battle. Maybe I should call it like Dawn's Day Siege for Beginners. Or how not to fight a siege. I mean, they're not fighting badly. And the attackers is just very just narrow-mindedness and um, and yeah, just one way, one system. And what we've got here, Warriors Lost Night, they're losing. Uh, but yeah, it's just really just like one route, and it's just a it's a brutal, grindy route. That's for sure. What we've got here, Blackhaven sentries. These guys are being held in. Oh no, there's the second one. They said they were holding them in reserve for the next layer. I thought, but maybe they feel like they got them here. Balance power is still not looking great, but now numbers is with the uh, the defenders. But that might be just because elves and dwarves are fighting for the attackers, and elves and dwarves are really strong and have very small units. Probably that is the reason why. Bodies are starting to pile up in these choke points. At some point, it, they like just start to become small mountains, I guess. It's a shame that doesn't really happen. More of like an ultimate uh, battle simulator or whatever it is it's called. Oh, here we go. Finally, a push is being made by the attacks on this side. We're seeing two Dwarven Barrack Gargoyings. So the creme de la creme of Dwarven Shocking Tree going in against Unbody Serpers and Dunherd uh, Swordsmen got a third unit of Dawn Barragar coming up and then we have uh, the Sons of the Mountain as well as the final shock I thought what the hell they got but yeah the Dwarves spamming out that, sh that shock bringing some really really elite units actually all these units over here super elite I mean Aramis from Veterans Sons of the Hill Mansion Reclaimers two Mordens yeah all really really strong expensive units so we might see a Dwarven spearhead here soon Yeah, the shock is steadily making progress. More axes coming in. They're really trying to uh, stop these Dawn Barrigard with those throwing axes. They'll catch them, all those guys, and they'll just throw them back. They don't give a damn. These guys wield the same axe as Gimli. Probably have the same skills as Gimli. Imagine facing like a hundred Gimli's at once. Would you rather face like one life-size Gimli or like a hundred dwarf-sized Gimli's? There you go. Yeah, he's a... Uh, Shock imagery here, very, very late. They are actually losing now, down to 69 men. Uh, I think they're getting shot in the back by Corsair archers, I think, or certainly shot in the side by these archers. Uh, we've got more archers coming back. I think they were going to try and resupply it, but they have failed. Uh, one of the uh, Dunland archers over here, Elder Archers, is resupplying, or it's going to at least. Uh, these, uh, like these supply routes only have three goes, so let's use all three, that's it. The 
metal drives, so they might need to be sent in. Don't know about just this very second. Very soon, maybe. There you go. Dwar Aerosmith and Veterans look badass. I'm really glad that they got rework. Like, it just reminds me of, like, Huskals. From, like, Viking Huskals, like, the helmet and then, like, the shields on the back. They look badass. Men are breaking? Oh no. Oh yeah, the swords here broke. And look at that Dwarven Barrett Guard up through. Iron Hill Cross was are under threat. I mean, if I was the uh, Dwarven player, I mean, maybe looking to loop around. Oh, but here we go. We're going to have a Cav Charge here. Champion Reavers seeing a perfect opportunity to take out this very, very elite Dwarven Barrett Guard. Get these crossbows mobilized and start firing at that general. You can do some serious damage there. But yeah, he's going to go straight on in. There you go, not a bad charge at all there. Doing some decent damage, but the general is starting to lose troops quite des desperately here. But Dawn Barrett Guard could just, they just need to flank around. They could kill these guys very quickly and then open up this whole area. And then they could throw in all these other choke points as well. Like this choke point here, which has been held for ages, finally started to be worn down. What do you think? Are the defenders going to win or the attackers? I mean, numbers-wise, it's 2,800 against 2,700. Very, very close when it comes to numbers. But you got to remember, like, the dwarves and the elves on the attack, super elite. I mean, the dwarves on defense, also super elite, but... There's only one of them. There's two, of the, two attacking, like, elite armies. These, like I said, these animal sentinels, they just don't give up. They just carry on the fight. Still here. Nutters, a lot of them. We've got Twilight Guard moving on. They are just going to just carry charging on up. See if they can catch what, anything out. Those Iron Hill pikemen just face through that rock. I just saw that. Dunberg, what are your magical world? What's in your magical world allows you to face through a rock? It's incredible. Uh, Carlin Hunters here, still with a decent amount of ammo. I think just going to get a set up and just shoot anything in the back or in the side that engages those pikes. Uh, but yeah, as you can see here, we have a bit of a route when it comes to the Dunland troops here. The dwarves, the Barrett Guard are going to just keep cutting down these Elder Archers. And there you go, they are running. And now it's just a race with that general. Can he get back across the time and get back to his own lines before the, uh, the dwarves uh, arrive and cut him off? I mean, he should do. He is a cav unit. The dwarves only have little legs. But you, uh, you never know. Uh, those archers, I don't know if they'll make it. And they just got some more ammo. Some very precious ammo returns them. As you can see here, it's well broken through on this side. Have the, uh, have the attackers. I think they just allowed it to, uh, to happen to the defenders because, well, they had no more troops to supply them. They've been cut off. So, yeah, that shows what happens when you make an attack in more than one spot, attackers. You actually, uh, you break through eventually. Eventually. Uh, they still got some good units. Heroes of Ammon Lank. They still got Warriors of Loznok. Not so great. Uh, I won't put them in the same sentence as Heroes of Ammon Lank. They still got some Shock, some Pole Arms for the Elves. Um, which is good to see. Uh, yeah, decent amount of elves left, actually. Um, and then, obviously, Founding Guard as well. Citadel Guard, pretty good units. The Dwarves have still got some very good units as well. Two Mordens, still got Sons of the Hill. Barrett Guard, still relatively healthy. Um, and Mansion Clavers as well, very healthy. Uh, almost, well, actually, yeah, fully intact. So they are going to do a lot of work. So, yeah, there's still hope for the attackers. Uh, defenders as well got some pretty good units left in reserve. Shock's really good. Um, they've got some... A few bows, but nothing insane. And then they've got pole arms and, and spears already holding these choke points here. These are where they're, they're going to try and make or break the enemy uh, and make and break this, the siege, really. If they can hold them here, they're doing really, really good. And they should hold a little while. Um, it, I think the elves lose, use most of their ammo up, as has Gondor. So, yeah, actually shooting, uh, like, shooting this w their way through is going to be tough. And it looks like they're trying to do the same here, trying to kill the arable crossbows, which is not a bad idea, actually, for the uh, archers to do, because if they kill these archers and stuff off, then it basically means that, well, the only way you're going to get 
uh, through these choke points is going to be with uh, with actual polars. Yeah, look at this. Another charge from the champion Dreamers. They've actually managed to catch out these aerial crosses. Why weren't they on fire at will? Shooting at those, uh, or just shooting generally at that, uh, that general. That's a big, big kill it could have been. But yeah, they kill the crossbows off, which is basically all that's left for the attacking range. They have a really good chance of just holding in the choke points with their pole arms and their spears and just like being like, yeah, you're not breaking through. It's impossible. I mean, they got some of the best, uh, like, archers, not archers, sorry, best spears around in the Iron Guards. And the Iron Hill Pikes aren't too bad. They'll, they'll hold the line. They'll do well. The general is going to retreat now. Finally, that champion Dreamer is going to get out of there. Yep, yeah, it does see. I don't know how that unit's got behind the sword. I think maybe uh, either a pull through or. Well, actually, there's a huge gap here. So maybe not. Yeah, this dwarven unit should die pretty quickly. And they actually didn't route. The Admiral Sentinels routed first. That's insane. Actually, it's hilarious. Over here, an archer unit being caught out. There's Elder Archers. They've managed to use all their ammo by the looks of it. It's good to see. But they're now just going to make easy kills to these Mantra Claimers. Here we go, Mantra Claimers, hacking and slashing. That guy's going to, oh, I thought he was going to lose his head. He did not. Actually, they have like a tiny little bit of ammo left, but not too much. It wasn't like the end of the world. Uh, this is wasteful, though, by the dwarves. They're just setting their barrack guard head on at crossbows here. I mean, I know that they're, uh, I don't know how strong they were, but they might have been a weak unit, but even still, it's barrack guard. Like, freshen them up, they'll do okay. Yeah, it's got a second unit here of Aramis from veterans. I'm trying to scare off the crossbows. Yeah, really wasteful, I would say, by uh, by Erebor there. We are seeing, it looks like, more units were sent behind to try and route these, uh, these Umbai units here. Let's turn around so we get the, uh, the right angles. See the Twilight Garden here. And they're bloodied, but pristine sort of looking uniforms. Oh! They're a good-looking unit. Good-looking faction generally is uh, Lothlorien. Like, when I'm recording this, it's absolutely boiling in the UK. I do apologize. It's like I just stopped the drinks breaks because it is absolutely boiling. Oh, they're actually, you know, kind of going to kill those Twilight Guard off. Like, Iron Hill Warriors... Losing decisively, but they're going to take a few units down with them. But yeah, it's like I go away to Spain very shortly, and like it's supposed to be 30 degrees there. I honestly don't think we'll feel any change from the UK. It's been absolutely boring here, like high 20s, mid to high 20s. Great, but uh, I don't feel like Kills Brits are built for it. Erebor here finally has got to the choke point. Like, this is going to be the first contact with uh, one of these choke points, and they're going to take it slow. It's probably smart, can set up their crossbows and start trying to just. But focus down these uh, these pipes. It's not a bad idea. They are on um, low like low morale though because they have already been charged by gen like by a general. And there you go, just like that, routed by elder archers. Uh, just kind of happened, unfortunately. The next unit coming up though is a lot more healthy. Actually, the next two are both battered. I don't know. There's a health unit and two sort of battered ones, so I have to be careful. There you go. Finally, through those Iron Hill warriors. It took forever. And yeah, the next choice is just to get stuck in with these uh, spears and pole arms here. They're going to need to bring up things like uh, the Founding Guard or the Galadrim um, uh, Spear Warriors. I want to call them Spear Guard, but that's not right. Spear Warriors. They're going to need something like that to try and break through. I think the Galadrim Spear Warriors are better than the uh, Blackhaven Sentries, but I don't know 100%. The Blackhaven Sentries are, don't mess about, to be honest. They're both similarly priced as well. Like, uh, it, could, it would be a tough one. It seems like the attack is just going to send up Twilight Guard and these just, like, Amaral Sentinels and just... I don't know. Try and scout it out, try and flank around. I mean, there's, like, a tiny gap here on the left. Maybe you could get a column of something through there, but you'd... 
you'd be asking a lot from that column because there's units behind that could just counter charge. Same on this side, actually. It's a small space there. Whether the pathfinding allows it, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's why it's like that, but maybe that's the case. I should have Barrett Guard just charge forward and just get, like, absolutely wasted. That's what I'm seeing right now. I mean, not, like, wasted, wasted, but, like, there are, like, 10 or so Barrett Guard that are dead down here. We're also seeing the Iron Guards push forward. Uh, the Pikes have actually retreated. And now the Iron Guard is going to uh, get countercharged here by the uh, Barrett Guard. Don't think it's going to make a difference. They're trying to hammer their way through those axes. These Iron Guards, though, they are the best spears around in Middle Earth. They're so hard to kill. But maybe the Dwarves, you know, they know a way to get around it. Erebor does also have Iron Guards. Maybe they have the secret for killing them. Pikes are coming back down now. And they're just sending in these elite barrack guards. We, uh, they've already been like, sort of wasted. They're also allowing their own from veterans to get shot at. Like, this is kind of poor from the attacks. Don't let your units get freely shot at if they're not uh, engaged. Uh, they're absolutely not. I've seen Gondor actually come around here and help support. That's like how desperate. It's not got desperate over there, but yeah, Gondor feels like it needs to be everywhere supporting every attack, it seems. Uh, we are seeing pole arms founding guard just waiting there patiently. You've got the heroes of Amon Lank and Twilight Guard here as well, waiting. What's he doing? Just encourage. He doesn't need to really encourage these units yet. I'd be war crying these guys if possible, seeing if they'd break, but they won't. Again, on this side here, the attackers are trying to just uh, charge into pikes and spears. They're, they are in column. They managed to do that. Can they just sneak through that gap? Like, surely they can. I mean, they're instantly going to rout, but you could do it. Give it a go. I can't remember exactly what time we started at for the siege as well, but you've got to think about uh, like time limits as well. Like defenders have got time on their side. Eventually, uh, the attackers will have to just attack and just hope that they don't run out of time. Maybe they can break through. But yeah, they might need something about committing those pole arms. They're just standing looking at each other. It's so it's so intense. Look at it. Would you have even thought it would have happened? Oh, there they go. In they go. I think they also attacked on the side here. Not a bad idea trying to like flank the uh, the sentries. That might work. Oh, they routed, but they, if they set up a, a healthy unit, they might be able to get through. You know, do exactly the same thing. Problem is, I'm just worried that the Blood Avengers might counter charge them. I'm kind of rooting for the attackers. I feel like they're the underdogs. I mean, Balance Power would say they're not, but I'd say numbers-wise, and also I think um, it's all like positioning from the defenders. The attackers are kind of a, a way, way of a disadvantage here. I also think they've used up a lot of their like, good assets. Aerith and Veterans now in here. I also seen Gondor sold, uh, like Gondor infantry being sent in. Again, like attackers just use the flank, flank around. I mean, there are Faraz and Asgard here waiting. They they were probably counter charge, but yeah, that general's actually dying. Iron Guard general is dying. That is actually kind of a problem. They might want to think about pulling him out. Let the Faraz and Asgard stay in there because the dwarves have most of the choke points covered with their pikes and their spears. The spears probably wouldn't break, but still, the pike spike in a mass route. I always say it every time Umbar's uh, in these sort of like battles. I just think the Alphras and Asgard could just be a bit brighter. Like the uh, armor could just be, you know, look a bit more silvery, a bit more like reflective, a bit like the Gondor infantry they're fighting right now. Yeah, Umbar also a, a last breath sort of faction. But I guess maybe there's just so much limits that the, uh, they have with the submod. Seen two wardens set up. I feel like they uh, they pulled back a little early because those two wardens hadn't quite got into position. These guys are machines. If they don't get shot at, I'll be surprised. 
But the defenders need to take them as a, like, they're their main priority now, killing these two Mordens. But yeah, I don't know. He's actually pulling back his Iron Hill crossbows. Maybe to get better angles, then shoot the two Mordens. I don't know. Keep poking away, boys. Keep poking away. Yeah, they did pull out. Obviously, they did pull out the uh, the general. It looks like Alfred and Asgard losing the pole arms here. They really need to get those pikes involved uh, and try and do something. But yeah. The uh, Iron Hill General is safe. He's out of there. Uh, it does seem as though Twilight Guard losing on this idea. I mean, they are probably just getting impaled by pikes. It's a good day for the pikes, that's for sure. Like, that's a strong, strong formation. They ain't breaking through. Not yet, anyway. They need to break up, like, I don't know, trolls maybe would break through. Shame they didn't, they're not uh, got any evil factions here today. Spears have actually taken the offensive on this side. And here we go. We've got those uh, Galadrium Spear Warriors now coming up. They're finally sending these guys in. Should have been set up a little while ago. Get your pole arms down and start changing this fight. Start killing these spears. There you go. The elves and dwarves, they hate each other really. So they'll fight with great vigor to try and kill each other. Yep, there you go, the pole arms poked away. I don't feel like they're in phalanx formation though. They don't look like they are. Yeah, Blood Avengers also getting involved in there. So they're actually getting sent in. And there you go, the axes are being thrown. The Cardon Hunters are starting to do some damage to these, uh, these pole arms. And that's actually changing it. Look at that, Galadrium Spear Warriors losing because of those uh, Javis. Well, I get the technical up Javis, they're axes, but yeah. And throw in. Look at these guys. They don't mess about throwing those axes. Have you ever been to an axe throwing range? These guys would probably beat you every time. I mean, you'd hope so. They are like trained warriors in axe throwing. Seeing shock in between now being said in, they're going to try and combat the, uh, the Blood Avengers. And yeah, the, that pole arm unit's basically finished. 24 left. I mean, if I was the uh, axe warriors, yeah, I'd start focusing something else and then shooting a very healthy Gladium Sword Warrior here. 90 out of 100 left. And look at this. Serious popping again going on. I mean, if the axe, uh, like Carnon Hunters wanted to, they could just hit anything they wanted down here. So many elves to kill. So many options. Oh, they are. They are still throwing axes. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. I feel like they missed most of it. They, like, overshot. I thought a lot of those shots there. There you go. Warriors of Lozanark, you've got Galadrian Sword Warriors, you've got all sorts in here. Yeah, Galadrian Spear Warriors, they're about to break. They've just got so much. The Iron Guard is still healthy, got pulled back. It's kind of the Blood Avengers doing most of the fighting there on that front line. Back on the other sides, uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, Spears. Whole arms. Founding Guard are losing actually to Iron Hill Pike, but that makes sense. So they don't have the range like the Pikes do. So yeah, Founding Guard are probably going to lose a fight unless they can maybe take it at an angle over here. They're probably going to lose that and have to be forced back. Uh, on this side, though, I don't know. Oh, no, the Pikes still in here as well. We've got Blood Avengers also in here. And Dane's been thrown in. Yeah, it's just the Pikes. They don't have any pikes themselves to combat, so uh, yeah, pole arms are just getting screwed over. Their best opportunity is probably where that uh, that sentry is over there. They should have sent the founding guard that way. I mean, they could with Dane if they could possibly get around the sides here. There's literally one pikeman in that spot. Uh, I'm sure you could probably go around him. But yeah, that's where they need to attack. Instead of just charging back into the center like they are. Making it very, very easy for the uh, for the defenders at this point. I and mean, we've got crossbows now, like a healthy-ish, well, a healthy crossbow unit, but about, I'd say, half ammo left. 
He's shooting to the back of all of these elves. Here is Amon Lanker going to get absolutely murdered. Yeah, there you go. The shots start to, uh, to be sent flying into the back of these elves and the Citadel of Guard here. Oh my. But yeah, prime targets really. And as you can see, Ban's power is shifting in favor of the defenders. 1700 to 1100. Yeah, they are starting to turn it around. And it's just turning into a bit of a meat grinder now. Just those spears, oh, sorry, not the spears, the pikes probably farming kills. You can see that the attackers um, are being forced back on this side as the Arthras and Asgard and Blood Avengers push them back down this hill. Enemy general is dead. I'm presuming that's Dane is dead. Yeah, Dane has died over here. I mean, he's probably been impaled shish kebab on a pike. Oh, what a way to go. Manchu Claim is trying to fight over his body. Brutal, brutal fight. Really has been. I mean, they started off well, did the attackers? Well, I say that. I feel like the defenders, it was a, an, that, that was the art of defense. This, uh, this one has been like, I mean, look at the bodies down here. This is insane. There's a lot of dead attacks down there, I can see. A lot of Gondorians, a lot of uh, like Erebor axe warriors and stuff like that. And well, just Erebor units generally, but yeah, a lot of Gondorians stick out. But there you go. It actually ended in a draw just like that. I give that as a victory to the defenders. I don't know why it ever says draw uh, if the defenders hold the point. But there you go. We'll end the replay and have a quick look at the end results. Um, but yeah, this was sent in by a famous Austrian uh, who was playing as Dunlan. So thank you very much, man, for sending this one in. I mean, certainly on his side, uh, you got him and Nuno, who are very, very experienced. Um, I, the other players, I guess maybe just newer players, didn't really know uh, like where to attack or like what, what to send in, etc. Or like, uh, I don't know. Dunberg doesn't seem like it's the easiest of maps to attack. But uh, yeah, it certainly was. Uh, could have been di more... Uh, execute better, we'll say. We'll say execute better. But yeah, anyway, famous Austrian uh, playing as Dunland. 139 kills with his champion Reavers there. His sword's getting 123 kills. 294 for the Dunher Chosen. Blood Avengers getting 144 kills. Uh, Elder Archer's getting 146 kills. So well done to him. And then we have Nuno Revers playing as the Iron Hills, getting 180 kills with his Iron Hill Warriors here. 191. 185, 189. These guys did well. Solid, solid units, the Iron Hill Warriors, when used right. Uh, Iron Hill Pikeman, 232 kills, 207 kills, 300 kills with the Khan and Hunters. Oh my. Uh, very, very nicely done by um, by Nuno. And then we have uh, KKL, who was playing as Umbar, 117 kills with the Umbar Usurpers, 105 with the Arthras and Asgard. I was saying that, like, you shouldn't send these to do Nicorian, but two of them did get over 200 kills. I mean, maybe. But okay, the first one you can tell did not do very well. Um, his pole arms not uh, doing that great. I mean, one actually died. I can't remember where that was. But yeah, that one got murdered. Um, but his archers did pretty well. 201 kills and 184 with the Corsair archers. Very nicely done. Then we have the attackers. We have Justice uh, playing as uh, Lothlorien. Uh, 147 kills with Twilight Guard Jen. Uh, his Amaral Sentinels, I mean, though they're a good unit, I feel like maybe they're better on the defense than the attack. Um, but 123 is the best that any of those got. Uh, yeah, the rest of his army didn't really get much in the way of kills, like his shark or his spears. His spears, I think, barely got committed, to be honest. His archer is getting 153, 165, though. Is, uh, you know, it's kind of proof that Lothlorien's archers is kind of where its strength is. Then we have Smart King getting uh, playing as Erebor. His swords, again, he brought a lot of these like Dwarven Warriors. I don't know why he just didn't go with Erebor Axe Warriors. They're much, much better. Uh, but 109 kills with them, 101. Mantra Claim is getting 146 kills. His Arid Mithrim Veterans getting 100 kills. His Barrack Guard, one got 221 kills. The other's getting like around 150, not too bad. Two more than 60 kills in his crossbows. Yeah, not many kills for them. Scaraben playing as Gondor, getting a lot of kills with his Gondor Archers, actually. 202 kills, 140. Not too bad for them. Yeah, I don't know. I would recommend not bringing the Shock. They're not that great. They didn't get many kills in this one. Uh, his Swords did a lot better. 243, 149. Um, yeah, some solid kills there. Most of the infantry really struggled, though. As, like, it seemed for the attackers at most of that siege, they struggled with Archers. Like, the positioning of the Defenders' Archers is just so much better than their own. And they couldn't get great shots. And just 
unlock those defenses. But there you go, guys. That is today's Dawnless Days battle. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.